All right, everyone. This is Sandcast. We got Tries back in the house. He's got his shark's blood going in the veins, and uh, our audio levels are going to be awesome today because we got our new producer in the house, Mark Bucknell. Yeah. Who also happened to be producing AVP Uncovered, which is the first docu series that I know that has happened in in our sport, which is awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for letting for me come down. come to your house and talk about it a little bit. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. So what? Like you're out here for what? Like two days? Yeah, right now, two and a half days. Pretty quick. And so you came out, uh, you're, you're, you're playing the Norseka. That's why you came out. Yep, I'm playing my first Norseka qualifier on Wednesday. Okay. Haven't ever, I, uh, as somebody who's not from L.A. or California, like the, the USA volleyball stuff is so confusing yeah. to try to figure out. So somebody hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to come play it? And I was like, absolutely, because <laughs> I would have never known about it if you didn't ask me. So come play the first one of those and see, see, what yeah. the, see what it's all about. I feel like volleyball stuff in general is confusing. <laughs> It's not just the USA volleyball stuff. Where you live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to find those events to sign up for on the USA site. I've just had them bookmarked on my laptop for like four years because the one time I did lose it, it was like I can't, I can't find this thing again. Oh, yeah, no. I couldn't even. He sent me the link, and I, I was like, "Hey, I'm really sorry. I can't find it. If you can send it to me, that'd be great." Because I, I have no idea yeah. what's going on with this. Well, thing, I but. just sent it to <laughs> Kristen and Taryn too. And they were like, okay, great, we can sign up for yeah. like, Australia. And then they won that, and then they were good to go. Yeah, they're, they're doing great now. Those <laughs> they're two are, doing just fine. You know who's, awesome. who's signed up for the uh, qualifier, Norsega qualifier? I know a handful. Um, Logan and Hagen are playing together. Okay. Interesting little team. Avery Drost and Chris, Chase, Chase Freshman back together. Mm-hmm. Um, Nate Yang and Mike Grossell. Nate Yang and Mike Grossell are playing. Ben Vaught and me. That'll be fun. Hey. Um... There were, yeah, that, there was like eight teams. Right? There are eight. Yeah. So there's a handful more that I don't yeah. remember. I'll but. be I'll be already on my way to Atlantic City. So yeah. I when's the uh, is there a Narsega championship this year? That's usually Still worth a bunch TBD. of points. Yeah. So this isn't for that. Mm-hmm. No, okay. this is for. <clears throat> there's a stop in Canada that conflicts with AVP Virginia, and there's back to back to back stops in the Dominican, like consecutive weekends. <laughs> So I, I would die if someone actually just stayed in the Dominican for like a month and just played three back-to-back-to-back yeah. events. Have you and Ben talked about which ones you play if you qualify? We're going to pick a couple. Okay. Um, we're going to pick two or three, I think was kind of the plan. Okay. I don't know which ones are going to be. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an infant. I'm a volleyball infant, so yeah. I don't really know, <laughs> know how to make those choices or not. But yeah. I, I know we talked about picking two or three. Yeah, to try to go. Well, I was stoked to see Canada finally got one again because the U.S. and Canada haven't hosted one in a long time, and and then uh, it conflicted with Virginia. It's like, damn it! But I finally got to go to Canada and play in the Van Open. Yeah, highly recommend. Probably my, one of my favorite tournaments I've ever played. I've it's heard like, Vancouver itself is just awesome. Oh right? man, it's beautiful. It reminded me a lot of Switzerland. Yeah, actually, that's what I because it's like big green mountains and then. It's, a, it's the ocean, but it's like a really long outlet from the ocean, so it's just a lake, basically. Uh. And so you're just playing next to what is pretty much a lake. It's like Seattle, but a little bit bigger. Seattle mixed with Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> just real green, and like beautiful. People, amazing. Like, packed the whole time. Really? And they loved volleyball, because that's like their Manhattan Open right. out there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so they just showed up. Like huge numbers, like people, beer garden flowing. That was probably huge for Cameron. 8 a.m. p.m. Oh, yeah. Especially because he defected. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. It's the wrong word, but. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, Canadians, they have to be super nice. They're like, yeah. traitor, go Tra- game. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay, I have a question though. Did yeah. your handset on that sky ball, was it clean? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Good yeah. tell hand, the video. Your handset the serve? Yeah. So, Can't so like it, is that it's, it's like real? A, it's like a kids beach thing where you pretty much have to skyball on match point. Okay. Everyone does it except Sam and Dan. If it was close, they did not. Like they were there to win right. the ten grand. Uh huh. Um, but everyone else and the fans go crazy. They'll boo you like out of the stadium if you don't. Oh wow! And they go absolutely ballistic. Did Cameron like, do it? Because he's got a terrible skyball. They were skyballing, and he was with Troy, and so Troy was doing Troy's. it. Yeah, I mean, Any, he was chest passing skyballs. Uh, and so Anything we had, to entertain the crowd yeah. or play with the crowd. So our like ninth place match, we were up like twenty to ten in the second set. The first set was close, and so they're all chanting sky ball. Dude hits a high one, mm-hmm. and I told Rafi before I was like, if it's coming to me, I'm gonna handset the sky ball. 
And Hans said it came out perfect, didn't call it. And, uh, That's cool. and now they're sending me a shirt. So they have a shirt um, that said, I, I skyballed a match point at Kitts Beach, and so they're cool. making my own one that I handset a skyball and match I like that. There you go. <laughs> that was a thing in Hawaii growing up, like Aloha Ball. Okay. Skyball it. Yeah. wasn't, like, mandatory, but I do like that. It takes some guts. It was fun. It's almost like the freeze, you know? A little bit, like yeah. You have to skyball <laughs> yeah, on your first dude. match point. Yeah. Which kind of can bring the other team back into it. Yeah, but you got to do it. The social pressure. It, social I, pressure. I caved. I was like, I'm not going to do it. And then gonna. our like second round of pool to, to win pool it was like 21 20. Did no one do it in the final? And no, because the final was it was tight. Yeah. And the, even the MCs, the MCs were great. There were two of them, uh. and they played off each other like stand up uh. comics, dude. It was hysterical. I like that. And I mean, you guys should absolutely check it out. I've thought about that. Where if you have two MCs. And they kind of pick a team each. Yeah, it could be actually really entertaining. They, I don't. They, they must have been doing this for a long time because yeah. they just the way they played off each other and like the comedic timing. Yeah. I mean, they like and the place just loved it. It was just good vibes. So good whole weekend. All the Canadians, of course, it was like beautiful the whole weekend. They're like, I'm so sorry for the weather. So like, you guys are too nice. No it's, way. it's amazing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. So, but what's uh, you played a lot this year. <clears throat> Yeah, this is like this is the first year I'm really traveling and, and yeah. doing it. Um, so yeah, we went to Michigan, played that one, played the Panama City Beach one before that, San Antonio, those two AVP nexts. Um, I was up in Louisiana for a couple of months, and yeah. then Florida for the summer, and kind of kind of said goodbye to New England a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm from the Northeast, so volleyball there is super fun and has been really helpful for me, and like got to learn a ton and play with a bunch of people. But kind of hit a point where I was like, okay, I really want to learn mm-hmm. a little bit more, and there's kind of a not a lack of knowledge, but there's definitely not a wealth of beach volleyball knowledge sure, in the Northeast. Yeah. So it was like, all right, if we want to try to learn a little bit more and get a little bit better, we probably yeah. have to get out of here at some point. Um, <laughs> felt like a good time, kind of life-wise, to just mm-hmm. say goodbye to the Northeast and go learn a little bit and travel. And now we're, we just played Wapaka and then are playing Atlantic City this weekend too. Yeah. So we're, we're doing it as yeah. best we can. Whatever we can get into, traveling. we're, we're trying. Plan. Yeah. Was it tough last year, f- like doing so much filming? And watching volleyball and not getting to play it. It was weird. Yeah. It's I'm like my whole life as an athlete, like I could go watch a basketball game and go home and be like, man, I have to like go shoot around right now. Yeah. Like I have to do yeah. it. So last year I actually got to play the Atlanta qualifier. because um, it was two days and Taryn and Kristen were only on the second day. So we were filming with Taryn and Kristen in Atlanta. So I played the first day and we lost close to a good team. We had like zero points. Um so that was like that was my fill for Atlanta. That was cool. And then Manhattan, I was just out here. Yeah. Just filming like we filmed Zana's practice and Jake's practice, and we filmed in Manhattan, and I was just itching to play. It's so like Sunday of Manhattan, like everything kind of wrapped up, and I went and played co-ed pickup with some people that I knew, and there just you like go. had to get out there and do something. Mm-hmm. But no, filming last year was great. We uh, we were pretty much on the road for like a full month. Yeah. Because we we went to Baton Rouge before Atlanta, so we filmed Taryn and Kristen practice. I actually got to hop in with them with like. Our first day there, Drew was like, hey, we kind of need a fourth if you want to hop in. I was like, yep, perfect, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm in it a little bit, just doing yeah. nothing as a blocker. Um, I look terrible, but <laughs> it was good. So we were there with them for, for a couple of days, and then Atlanta obviously was like Thursday through Sunday with them, and then out here filming for the week before Manhattan. It was kind of probably a pain in the butt for the people playing, but for us filming last year, it was massively convenient that it was like back to back to back. Yeah. Um, that made it really easy to just block off the month of August and say, okay, mm-hmm. we're just going to be traveling and working. Right. But Well, we're kind of coming up on that. It's not quite as compact, but these next few weeks, this is the first time, I don't know, that I can remember ever playing like five AVPs in a row without having to go overseas. Yeah. Is it five? Maybe so more. I mean, you go what? You go Fort Lauderdale, Atlanta, Manhattan, Chicago. Manhattan, Chicago, Atlantic City. Yeah, so they... Oh, yeah, you're playing Atlantic City. Yeah, and the then Pro one. The other one. And then Phoenix. Yeah. Six. Six? Six in a row without an FIB. I, I don't think I've ever done that. You're not going to do the Hamburg? Now nah, we're over it. <laughs> <laughs> man, you can put your passport away for like two months. Exactly. It's a good feeling, I'm man. excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I just had a terrible trip from New York, Newark yesterday, but... Keeping it in the U.S., I'll, I'll take here. it. here. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a lot easier when you can, like, keep your phone on. Yes, you exactly. You food that you recognize and uh-huh. everything's in the right language. Yeah. Yep. No customs. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm super excited. 
That's going to be, you're going to play more AVPs in a row this year than you have in like the last two years combined. <laughs> yep, same amount. Yeah, six? Yeah, six. And if you want to come play Virginia Beach with me before Chicago, you're really welcome. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> more volley, my one get, week get off. Some crab cakes. I think I looked at the schedule and it's something like, I think there's three weeks off in like yeah. 11, 12 weeks or something like that. Yeah. So it's, I'll, I'll get my fix. It's a busy one. Yeah. It'll be fun. Where did, where did your idea for AVP Uncovered come from? It's a really good question. To be honest, I don't even know because it, like, it just kind of happened over time where I was just kind of mulling it over. And, and so my two business partners are my two best friends, which is like the coolest thing in the world. And, and anytime I complain about work, I have to kind of check myself because like, I get to hang out with my buddies all the time. But yeah. we, um, we were all actually living at my house. It was kind of like the winter winter coming out of COVID everywhere else in the country, but the Northeast was still kind of strict about stuff. And we we're living together. And we hadn't, we kind of had like just wrapped up a really busy few months of stuff and we just kind of had some time to think and I play beach volleyball and love it and want to see it be successful. And we all, we all kind of watched F1, like the drive to survive mm-hmm. stuff at lunchtime. We would like mm-hmm. eat lunch at my house and throw it on Netflix. Um, and obviously I, I would want to watch that with the people that I like to watch play beach volleyball. And there's a, there's a quote from Sarah Van Breath Natch or something is her name. It's some author that the world needs dreamers and the world needs doers. But what the world needs most are dreamers that do. Yeah. It's uh-huh. like one of my favorite quotes ever. Yeah. And I was sitting there one day like, man, I'm, I'm kind of in position where I could make this thing happen. I'm like uh-huh. I'm probably one of the few people in the world that loves beach volleyball and does video production stuff. I know there's a couple others and overseas, but like there's not that many that mm-hmm. could actually step in and try to do something. So I kind of developed the idea and pitched it to my buddies. It's like, hey, we could really try to do this. It could be pretty impactful. Um, they were all about it, super supportive of like an idea that was kind of like something that I cared deeply about. They, mm-hmm. they kind of bought all in and, and mm-hmm. cared about as well, which was super cool. So got in touch with, got in touch with the AVP through Jeremy Roche, which was okay. a, nice. a nice little like side entrance. It's a good end. Oh, yeah. Um, he was great. I, uh, I was in California for one week before my whole life. In 2019, I drove around the country and I stopped in Hermosa for a week. I like just started playing volleyball at like, like local open level. My first day here, sunrise, I just like went to the beach early to try to beat traffic and there were these dudes practicing over by the pier and I went over and was like, hey, when you guys are done practicing, does anybody like want to play pickup or anything? I know you don't know me, whatever, I don't want to bother you. And they were just like, no, just hop in, like, come on, just train. And Jeremy Roche was one of them. Nice. And I, and I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> so I like, I texted him and was like, hey, do you have anybody I can get in touch with about this? He was like, mm, I don't know, man, like, that's my boss. I'm not just going to like send me your stuff. I'll, I'll let right, you know. Right. So a couple of weeks went by and I got an email from Glazebrook saying, Hey, this is interesting. Let's chat. Let's set up a time and kind of worked with, with him. And obviously that dude is so busy, but mm-hmm. he, he was great in kind of helping us get the access and, and figuring out who we were going to film and how we were going to do it. So that's kind of the brainchild of initial stages of the idea was we want to do it. And AVP was kind of like, you know what, we can't help you a ton, but right. you know, we can help you the best that we can. To make, access. Yeah, exactly. We can give you what we can give you. Mm-hmm. To, to really make it happen it's just going to be like kind of up to you on how you're going to do it and what it's going to look like and yeah. we uh, just kind of ran with it we <laughs> got to a point where we were just so far deep that we were like we need to buy plane tickets like, <laughs> right, like yeah. right before Atlanta and we were like are we doing this? like are we really going to buy tickets for a whole month on the road? and it's like alright hell yeah let's dive in and make it happen so yeah. now we're getting ready to launch it kind of crazy and when, when is the launch date? like official? July 28th okay. um, that's next Thursday I think. Okay. I think it's one Thursday away. <laughs> I don't know the date. But yeah, Thursday, July 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to premiere the first episode on YouTube, um, which like we're happy about and not happy about. I think it's, it's one of those things where like we, we know that we've created this pretty valuable product that we think yeah. is super cool. And anytime you just throw something on YouTube, it kind of like devalues it a little bit, which is a bummer. But I think all of that aside, I'm so excited that like it's going to be accessible. Mm-hmm. Like the casual sports fan that's not a diehard volleyball fan isn't going to have to buy it or like right. subscribe to something to be able to see it. So that is like the saving grace of why we're super excited about doing it there is like if I watch a little documentary on like a PGA golfer and this pops up suggested, I might click it yeah. and that might help volleyball. And mm-hmm. on that like little chance of a, a sliver yeah. of hope is like as a volleyball guy, that's like the most exciting thing to me. And that. do you guys have a pre-existing channel already? 
Or so, you, you developed a channel just for this yeah, series. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we, we launched a channel for this series where we just kind of, we've been posting teaser content for like a year. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's, a, there's a handful of commenters on Instagram that are pretty annoyed. They're like, man, where is <laughs> it? Man, I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. um, but we've just been posting like reels on Instagram yeah. and little posts and stuff. And I, I will say they've been performing unbelievably well. And like, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't really market our, our job as a video production company is like, we're pretty traditionally video production. We don't handle like the distribution typically. Right. So we have this thing now, this little platform that has like 9,000 followers almost. And our, all of our reels have over 10,000 views and like two are in the millions and a bunch are in the hundreds of thousands. And uh -huh. like, we're just excited about it, but we don't know what to do with that. Like right. it's, it's cool that people are just seeing good it. good content and talking. in yeah. general. It's good stuff. And you know, hopefully the word has spread well enough and Credit to Zana, Jake, Taryn, and Kristen too, because they've they've shared a bunch of stuff, and just we'll make something and tag them in it, and they'll they'll all share it in their little yeah, audiences, and for sure they get a mini boost. We get a little boost. It's pretty good. Yeah. For sure. um, so yeah, on YouTube that channel's growing kind of quickly, which is yeah, it, which has been cool. Um, little teaser stuff. We posted some of that. a good the, idea to start the channel a while ago and then build it with reels, which are just teasers for the actual yeah yeah product itself. Yeah. So this week. This week and next week, we'll kind of ramp up the posting a little bit, just to try to get everything ready mm -hmm. and like as many eyeballs as we can. I've already been seeing a lot. Yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, there's didn't, been a ton. Didn't did you put one up today? I think yeah, I we saw posted one of Zana. Yep, they're Zana. all collaborator ones, so like you'll see it from her and then from you guys. And yeah, I feel like I've been seeing a decent amount. It's been it's been pretty weird showing up at these tournaments, like the little ABP next and, mm -hmm. and tour tour events, where I'll get there and some random person will come up to me and be like. Hey, you're the dude that did AVP Uncovered, right? And I'm like, well, wait till the series comes out. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that like you know that and have seen it. Like that's super right. cool. I appreciate it. And they're yeah. all like, when's it coming out? And I'm like, I can't tell you. <laughs> but now I can tell everybody. It's yeah. July 28th, um, and then it'll be every Thursday after that for five weeks. So we, nice. You did one sick. episode at a time. Yep. So it's a right five up. episode series. They're like 24 minutes each. So it's like it's like programmed to be a little TV show. Mm -hmm. um, I actually nice. sat with Zana today and showed her some of her episodes, oh, and she nice. was like, man, this is so cool. Like, Sick. Yeah, everybody struggles listening to themselves talk and watching themselves on camera a little bit, but it's cool. Like, Not I'm, us. We're four, <laughs> we're four years into that. We're over yeah. it. <laughs> we're used to this by now. Yeah, you have to be. It's a yeah. weird feeling, but you have to be. Yeah. It is. But you, I mean, you guys, like, you mentioned that you work with your couple of buddies and you guys just did this thing, but you took a month out of your lives, invested a lot of time and money. I mean, video production is not a cheap thing. This was not an easy, it couldn't have been like the easiest thing for you to be like, yeah, let's, let's just do this. Let's wing it. No. Let's just spend like $20,000 worth of our time and money to. I mean, being on the road costs you a lot of time, yeah. but then the editing part costs you a ton like of yeah, 10 time. times more. Yeah, yeah. more. Yeah, so we, um, we were really fortunate timing wise. So we, this is like terrible to say, but COVID was like really good for us. Um, Everyone always says it's terrible to say, but I feel like like ninety percent of the people I talk to were like, "It's terrible to say," but COVID was actually kind of awesome. For no, it just means yeah. we made lemonade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> made exactly. Lemons. That's That's all. exactly. Yeah, we 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 squeezed some lemons. Um, so a lot of the bigger production companies didn't travel their teams during that time, um, and we're we're from Rhode Island, so Newport Rhode Island's like a little tourist hotspot. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple of projects in Newport that we wouldn't have gotten had had these companies been able to travel their teams. That kind of let us do some work and, and kind of. We all graduated college in 2019, so it's been our, our full-time job for like two and a half years now and kind of started it as like a summer job while we were mm -hmm. in school. So like this, our company was like running, you know, we were rolling. So you guys all went to college together? No, actually, we went to elementary school together, Whoa. elementary, middle, and high school together. Oh, so, crazy. Yeah, we've known each other since like like little kids. Um, my So it's, their names are Bruce and Howard. They're great people. Shout out them. They might listen. I don't know. But they... Uh, I feel like they would. Yeah, I would think. I, <laughs> I feel like they should listen. Bruce and I, like, we met in fourth grade and kind of butted heads. Uh -huh. We were, like, rival friend groups. So yeah. we would, like, play football at recess. And it was, like, pretty heated football games. But by the time we got to, like, seventh grade, Howard came into the picture. We were all buddies. But we all split up for college, actually. And when okay. we came home, we would, like, do it as a summer job. And it was, like, we, we all lived at a Howard's family's basement. And we worked there, and we lived there. Like Bruce and I built little bedrooms in the basement, and <laughs> and you just made your own little production company. Yeah, we just picked a logo. And, and was that all your guys' passions, or anything that you're pursuing in school? <laughs> the other two were engineering majors, and I was studying advertising. Actually, I was studying psychology at the time, and then switched it once we once we started doing it. So uh -huh. it was like a thing that we did for fun in high school. Yeah. We would like travel with our friends and just like make little videos of fun where stuff. we went on the weekends and stuff. Um, so it was like a fun thing, and then that that summer after sophomore year of college we we just kind of committed to it and we like 
went through Craigslist ads and like cold called everybody. <laughs> and it would, you know, somebody would post, hey, I need an event photographer. We'd call them and say, hey, how about a video? Yeah. You want a video instead? And right. kind of just snowballed that where we maybe foolishly kind of called the biggest ad agency in our area at the end of that summer and said, hey, we're, like, we're the new kids on the block. We're, you know, looking to work with you guys and do a whole bunch of stuff. And on the phone, their, <laughs> their head of production was like, you know what, we don't really do this, but come on in, you know, let's have a meeting and see. And, and they ended up being our, one of our best clients and we've, we've worked with them a ton and learned from them a ton even more. You must have delivered then. Yeah, right. It's been, it's been good. Yeah. We, um, <laughs> so that next summer actually we worked out of their office. They, they kind of gave us like an internship for our business, which okay. was like the best thing ever. Um, and they had some great clients like New Balance, Gatorade, stuff like that, where we just got to see, see what that looks like and, right. and, and how does a production company work with an agency. So we, we've been very lucky to learn early. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we graduated, we did, we got hired to do a, a six episode tourism show and like fully direct, write, produce, film, edit. Like we were just hired to make six episodes of this show. Yeah. And that project we got hired for right before the AVP season, AVP season of 2021. And we had to start filming like four days after Chicago. Okay. So we got that project. We knew we were a little bit financially secure for like a short period of time because of it. And that let us buy a bunch of plane tickets and say, okay, okay, we can do this thing that we want to do because as soon as we're done with it, we're going to come here and we're going to work on this thing for six months. So we, we filmed for the whole month of August. We went back to Rhode Island and we traveled around New England and didn't touch AVP stuff until probably February because okay. we just couldn't. Huh. We, had, we had to work on that one, which was great. Cool show. It's called Eat, Play, Stay. Eat, Play, Stay, Boston. We did the whole thing. Um, do you think that doing AVP Uncovered made you better at doing the absolutely. other one? Yep. 100%. Yeah. And, and like... <laughs> We can kind of track it back to, to like what made us ready for AVP Uncovered and yeah. what made us ready for the last one. We, mm -hmm. my, uh, my older sister's a really good rock climber. She, um, okay. She's like the director of youth programming for a, a chain of gyms. Sick. And they do a, a contest every year that's the roots are all set by an all-female team. And it's my sister, and we were just like a young production company. I called her a couple <laughs> of years ago and said, hey, can we make a little documentary thing on, your, on your, your stuff? And we actually got hired by their gym to do it and like – we didn't know what we were getting into with that. And we kind of learned it and limped through it and yeah. made the best thing we could then and then took those lessons and applied it to the next thing and the next thing. And we did a little series called The Things We Do where we interview okay. people on like something they're passionate about and went and filmed them doing it. And selfishly for us, that's so cool to mm -hmm. kind of let, get led into these people's worlds. And, you know, we did one on, on the guy that like metal works art kind of. Okay. And like we're just in this dude's studio all day and it's just, it's just his life and we're just kind of flies on the wall. So we got to learn those lessons and then just bring them to AVP and be a fly on the wall at Jake's house and his family dinner and be a fly on the wall with Taryn and Kristen when they were sleeping at, at Drew Hamilton's house and yeah. training there right. and like watch Zana's Monday night family barbecue. Like it's just cool to yeah. step into these people's lives and get to experience it. Um, and, and what, I, yeah, what hard. went into choosing those specific characters? That's a great question too. You actually we, hit um, the jackpot because you didn't know yeah. how that year was going to go and it ended up being <laughs> yeah. a year that you really want to see those players. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Jake, you knew his probably retiring or whatever but the other girls you didn't know how they were gonna do no we got so lucky and, a, and a, a piece of it i think is like people love to say you create your own luck but we got so lucky with everything that kind of went down and make those storylines mm -hmm. interesting so we were actually going to film james shaw as our qualifier guy the way that we outlined it to the avp and said hey this is how we want to do right. this is that we wanted to film like the qualifier grind kind of somebody who like is a pro but probably has a job because I think that story is so interesting. Somebody that's like an accountant and then goes and right. plays pro volleyball on the right. weekends. It's kind of wild. And then somebody who's like on their way out, kind of a legend. So that was like the initial prototype for what character we wanted so like to two, find. Two we're going to do three. Are, yeah. Okay, three. So yeah. like legend retiring, somebody with a job, and somebody that's In like between. a qualifier. Okay, got you. Yeah. So we were going to do James Shaw as our qualifier. We didn't really know who to do for somebody that had a job because we called a couple different athletes and they were like... We're going to do Baumgren. It would have been wild. He, Travel would have been, been good. He would be yeah. good. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see what does that guy do the rest of the year? <laughs> Just shovels his driveway, probably. Yeah. Minnesota, man, that's crazy. But no, we thought about it, right? Yeah. And like when we thought about who we were going to pick to, a lot of it was just travel dependent of like, right. we knew that we were kind of self funding a lot of this. So for us to be able to afford it, like we kind of had to be able to snowball some of these things together. Mm -hmm. um, so we were going to film James. We were trying to film with Case Patterson, and we talked to them a little bit, and it just mm -hmm. kind of fell through and didn't work out. Um, and, it, and Jake kind of fell into our lap because Glazebrook and him are buddies, and he was kind of like, you know, if you guys want Jake. And we were like, yeah, <laughs> I gladly. I guess we'll settle. <laughs> yeah, pretty great story. Hall of Famer retiring um, this year. Perfect. 
So yeah, that the choice there and the Taryn and Kristen kind of was like super last minute because James was gonna play all year and then kind of got hurt, had to get surgery like mm. a week and a half before Atlanta maybe. Um, and we were in Atlantic City and kind of knew some of the other New Orleans Baton Rouge volleyball people and they were like, hey, if you guys want to get in touch with them. So yep, absolutely. So we had that one FaceTime a jackpot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big win. <laughs> that that butterfly effect alone has like significantly changed my life personally as well you got as our the, cities. You got your qualifier team, and then by the end of the year, they're the top team, <laughs> best yeah. team in the country. <laughs> Man, little fun story that nobody nobody knows is that they almost didn't have to play the qualifier in Atlanta. So they they were working to try to get a wild card just because they uh. had won every AVP Next event for like a year. Mm. They hadn't uh, lost right. all summer, so they were they like. In my mind, probably were pretty deserving of a wild card. Right. If there's a young team that should go in, they had they had the resume right. and with and, their college resume. Yeah. Exactly. But our plan was to film a qualifier team, so we had them as our qualifier team, and so they're you texting hit up me Glazebrook like, on the download. Hey, <laughs> don't give don't them the wild do card. It. <laughs> no, we we really in. didn't. They they might have thought we did, but no, they like <laughs> they were trying to get the wild card, and we were sitting there like kind of fingers crossed, like yeah. negatively, and like they're great people. We're friends with them, and obviously want the right. best for them. But it was like, oh my gosh, please have to play the qualifier. <laughs> And then they got into the qualifier, and we we're like, "Oh man, like, please just win it." <laughs> please win now. Now you have to win. Yeah, we like we filmed enough footage of the qualifier in case we had to make a whole episode of just that if they happened to lose or uh-huh. something. And then they got in, and it was like, "What do we do with this now?" Like, right. now the qualifier is nothing. Yeah. Right. Not that important in terms of what their story is going to be. But that, yeah, we we hit the jackpot with those two. They For um, sure. they're great. And and Zana's story is cool. Justin, she's just such a local in Hermosa Beach. Like, she drew a massive crowd for all of her matches last weekend. And then she's, like, kind Wait, of on Zana that. from that Hermosa? Cusp. Manhattan. She's from Manhattan. How did I not know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, like, super local. Yeah, she's, like, yeah. How did I not local. know that? Interesting. Yeah, so now we're just teasing you. He's, he's got oh, all the info for you on Zana. <laughs> so Zana's Zana story last year is a, a kind of wild one because her, hers shouldn't have been that interesting. Like, realistically, right. when you think about it, it's, like, you're somebody that's, like, trying to contend and has earned that spot. You know, mm-hmm. you semied in 2019 or whatever. Um, kind of have your team, have your partner, you're ready to go, and then Chrissy gets hurt. Yeah. And it's like, Zana played three events with three different people and yeah. got three great finishes. Yeah. And like, yeah, that's not easy. At a point in her career, too, where it's like, I'm either going to be good at this or I'm going to back off. You know, like that's yeah. kind of that, what, second, third year? Third year? It's, it was uh, last it's year. It's weird because COVID doesn't yeah. really count. Yeah. But like that point in your career where you're a few years in and you're like, I'm not going to just do this if I'm not going to make it, you know, yeah. for her. For someone at her level, and yeah. then you lose the partner, and it's like, well, I still got to go ball out and prove to myself that this is worth yeah. all that. Yeah, so we got to see that, yeah. and like you, will, people will get to see that. Like it's, it was super cool. And then obviously Jake's Jake's year, yeah, you know his last time playing for you know most like the last time playing a full season, last time playing mm-hmm. with Taylor. Yeah, it, it was weird. It was super weird to be present for that and kind of, you know, have to ask him about it and be like, all right, man. <laughs> How you feeling after Manhattan? Let's talk about it. And I was like, really? You want to talk about that right now? Oh, yep. I, oh yeah. I can't Let's wait do it. to hear that. <laughs> Good timing. Let's it was go. a weird year. Yeah, yeah, it was a weird year. with Jake as well. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask how it was with Jake because he, he doesn't like doing the media stuff. Like, oh, he, he loves it. Been... Yeah, he was a huge fan of us. That's all good. of it. He's no, like, he, I feel like he's been better in his later years of just like opening up and just letting no, it go. He was out. He didn't want to do it. But like Jake on the court, <laughs> the personality... <laughs> Like he has polar opposites. <laughs> He's got that mamba that comes out. Yeah. He um. Yeah. So his stuff, like everything that we film with him, is fantastic. You know, he's done it. Mm. He he knows how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But he was really good at one thing that Zana and Turn and Kristen have to learn, and that's walking into the players' tent, and our cameraman would follow him into the players' tent, and then by the time that our camera guy Howard would get in there and look for Jake, he'd be out a different door, and on his way home. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good at that at every tournament. Um, <laughs> And the young ones hadn't learned that skill yet, but Jake was slippery. No, he was great. Like, I mean, everything that people say about Jake in terms of just like being really genuine and all of it, super true, firsthand experience. But he was definitely challenging for us. And I think a piece of that too is like, we we were 24, and the other people we were filming were 24 and 25, and right. Jake was 44. And yeah. it was like, how how are we going to connect and relate? So we had mm-hmm. to, you know, build that rapport quickly professionally. But I think that one's more of a professional thing. Whereas like Zana, Taryn, and Kristen were all kind of. Right. get along and can be friends and, yeah. you know, text them congrats and stuff when they do well now. But It's tough because you guys have never really done anything like that before. So I feel like you guys were also feeling out new territory, which is cool to do with the young crowd where 
Donna doesn't. She's never had a docu series done on her. She's like, I don't know what you guys are supposed to be doing. But yeah. like you said, Jake, he's done it. He's been around the block. Like he knows, you know, when cameramen they know what they're doing. But you guys were still sort of flying by the seat of your pants a little oh, yeah. bit as well. Yeah, don't throw us under the bus like that. But yeah, we um, <laughs> we learned a lot. We learned a lot on the fly, and it was, you know, realistically, Davey P is something that I knew well. You know, I kind of knew the ins and outs of who was going to do what and when stuff was going to happen. And, I, you know, I like to consider myself an educated fan. So, like, I know what's going on a little bit. So I was able to offer a little bit of guidance from just, like, a context perspective. But mm-hmm. so much of it is, like, you know, how much leeway do we have to, to be present and how much leeway do we have to say, okay, that's kind of challenging on our end. Like, can you fix it when the reality is that we want to see their real life. You know, mm-hmm. we don't want them to change a thing about their day. And, you know, I think realistically they didn't have to, which is great because we're, we're able to be super agile and flexible. But it was certainly a, a good learning experience for us. And we, we had done, I mean, at this point, we've legitimately interviewed hundreds of people from, like, little kids, like Naya's age, up to, like, presidential candidates. Mm-hmm. So, like, interviewing Jake for me as a volleyball fan was super cool, but I had to turn that off and just be, like, a peer. Mm. And it's like, okay, now we're just going to be peers, and I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to ask you these things, and we're going to talk about it. And that's, that's like, a really weird mental exercise to do, and we yeah. just, like, aren't allowed to be a fan anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we were well-equipped. That's we were, a huge yeah. skill, I feel like. Because, like, as you move up, like, in your career and whatnot, you have to be able to relate to the people at the next level, you know, and, like, gain their trust a little bit. But it's like, it's like when a, when all of us first get in the players' time for the first time, you're like, oh, Phil Dalhauser, like, <laughs> hey, Mr. Stafford, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stafford, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh. But you got to be able to like at least you know show that respect. It's okay to be a fan, but like also like, no, I'm here to I'm here to play. You need to like get that message across, and yeah. whatever it is, even if you're not playing. But yeah, that's I mean, just shows like you're on like a growth path you know yeah no it, it definitely felt important and it's like you don't know how well you do it until after you know like you try to do it you try to be aware of like okay i'm gonna obviously respect your jay gibb right four-time olympian and like we all know it mm-hmm. but it is like i need you to sit here and i need to put this microphone in your shirt mm-hmm. and like we're gonna do these things kind of our way now and that was weird it was funky and it was a, a little bit less weird with the other three but then jake is like we're going to jake's house and it's like oh <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm gonna take my shoes off or what? Like a little, little nerve wracking. I think yeah. it'll be it'll be cool for fans to get sort of that inside look, in, especially in Jake's life because Jake didn't grow up in the social media era, right? So Don is pretty good at social media. Like we know like a fair amount about her personal life, and same with Kristen and Taryn. But Jake, he's never been big on the Instagram, and so I think it'll be cool for people like get. To know Jake a little bit. And we've had him on the podcast a couple times. Um, I, I feel think, like I barely know the, the guy, and I've been on but, tour for <laughs> years. Yeah. So that, that's awesome that you got him to agree to do that. Yeah. Super thankful. Again, like, it, the show wouldn't be what it is without them being who they are and the way that they all were. So like, we got to, got to film Jake at a soccer practice. Like, Coach Jake. That's epic. Like, it's that's just awesome. cool. I do want to do that one day. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. It's super, and that's just like, coaching the ladybugs out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, amazing! It was it was Jake and two little kids, and that was it for and practice. Two kids, two, two of them. So he's like perfect. Like he hopped in. Him and him and Jane played two on two with the kids. That was great. Fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. epic. It's perfect. So you know, definitely got a window into what what real life looks like. Yeah. Right. Um, which yeah, it, it's something that fans want to see across every sport, and yep. beach volleyball hasn't had, and like. For us, when we thought about why should we do this and why should we sink time and money and effort, it was like impact is the word that we kept going back to of like, this could have an impact. You know, this show could have a positive impact on this little world that's a a small one, but a passionate one. And if we're in a position to create that impact, let's try to do it. And hopefully it does that. And obviously now is kind of time to find out. It's a little nerve wracking, but you know, we're super excited. I think it's, I've watched it a bunch of times, obviously, and like it's the show that I want to watch yeah right. so you know I'll sit there sometimes and just be like yeah I'll just review episode two again like why not and it's honestly a lot of people I mean we hear this all the time everyone's bringing up drive to survive pretty much for every sport that they like surfing did it mm-hmm. and I'm a big fan of surfing and it was amazing like I really didn't care about some of these athletes they were just a name that was getting certain scores and now I'm like whoa I had no idea who that person was and, and whatnot so I, I think it's perfect like what you guys are doing and people definitely want it because i keep hearing it coming up 
Uh, some people are trying to do it on the world tour uh, right now, but I mean, just that word impact. When I keep hear, when I hear impact, when I want to have an impact from people within our sport. I'm like, okay, these are the people we need to like help and like mm -hmm. help them come along and actually like do what they're doing because there are people who are kind of in it for themselves, even if they don't mean to be. They're not really. They're kind of feeling entitled for things to happen for them. Like, who's gonna make this show? Yeah. Like, dude, how has no one made this already? Yeah. When, what, what was the quote that you said earlier? The world dream. needs dreamers that do. Exactly. Yeah. Especially in a sport like ours where we're always like, oh, it could have been, it could be like it was, or it could be like these other sports are. We need to all, especially as players, just we got to be dreamers that do. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And yeah. then when we find people that actually want to do it, like when I s first got interviewed by you, I was like, let's do something. Like mm -hmm. you seem like you want to do something and you're actually going for it. Let's collaborate, let's do it. You're doing the same thing. There's a, obviously the McKibbins have done that in an amazing way. That's what we need more of. Yeah. So good job. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> That's cool to hear. We'll see if the doc's good though. We'll yeah, see. yeah. No, I, I think so. I, I think it's pretty gonna good. Be good. We, um, so I was living in Baton Rouge for two mm -hmm. months and I got to show Taryn and Kristen their episode, uh -huh. episode and a half ish. And like, that was selfishly the coolest thing to just sit there and watch them watch themselves do what they did in Atlanta. Like, they, they were just sitting there getting emotional, and I was like, oh, man, like, I hope this resonates with other people as right. well as it resonates with you guys, because obviously it's, you know, it's your life, so they're going to care more about it. But yeah, For sure. Like, I think it will resonate, and, and I, think it's, I think it's good. Do I'm a little biased. But. Right. Do you feel like you're painting a picture of their lives, like, with your editing and what you're filming? Because they're doing it, so it's you're documenting. You're not creating it. But do you still feel like you have some ownership of, like, how you're portraying them? It's funny, yeah. We um, there are a lot of documentarians that do that mm -hmm. and try to be the artist a little bit more. And we we chose really early on in our career that we were gonna focus on authenticity as much as possible, mm. whenever possible. So like, it's a pretty true picture of like what their experience looked like. Um, like we tried to influence as little as possible in terms of asking them to do anything other than what they were gonna do. It right. was just like keep us in the loop with where you're gonna be, and we're gonna pop in and like. They knew, obviously, when we were yeah. going to be there, but, like, in between matches and stuff, like, they just went back to the hotel room, and we just, we just went with them, and we saw what they did, and they ate their little snack, and we're sitting there, like, they won their first main draw mm -hmm. match, and, and they just go back, and they talk to each other about it, and, right. like, got, they got a couple phone calls, and, like, people were like, oh, my God, we watched you on TV, like, just these things that we got to see, and, like, we certainly influence it, you know, music, and, you know, how you, how you pace things change, how viewers feel about it, mm -hmm. but... Like it's a pretty it's a pretty real depiction of of what each of their seasons looked like, yeah. and and that's pretty intentional that we don't want to influence it a ton, and I, like I don't want that to sound super pretentious and like artsy and directory, but like it, it's I think the, the stories are cool enough without us like messing with them. So yeah, it's certainly edited in a way that makes it consumable, and like we have hours worth of stuff that's no never going to get seen and not right. be used because twenty four minutes is like long ish, but like it's really short. Yeah, for sure. when you when you think about a weekend long volleyball tournament and you're gonna yeah. see it in 24 minutes, it's no, like, totally. There's a lot of stuff that we're not gonna not gonna get to see or share, but yeah, for sure. And that we certainly have ownership over what we pick and mm. choose to pluck, but we try to make it the the most accurate depiction as possible. I think it's really helpful to athletes whether they know it or not, just painting like a really authentic picture of who they actually are, rather than who they even want to be portrayed as, because. When they get caught in that kind of cycle of trying to, and, and when you're playing in front of fans, like it's easy to like try to be someone other than who you are. Um, but I mean, if you're you're getting documented, then you see yourself in this. You're like, well, people already know who I am and like how I roll, so I'm just gonna go out there and be myself. You know, it's like an excuse to go, just be a more authentic version of yourself and not get caught up in that whole loop that we see so many people yeah. get caught up in and they're trying to do things and wear things and whatnot just where it's just actor, like basically <sighs> you're just trying you're trying too hard you yeah. know like bring i actually was i uh, had a com long conversation with uh adrian grumbla over and nice and he's like the most authentic swaggy like he doesn't have to do anything to put yeah. on a show and he's just him being himself is just the best brand ever and he was talking about how he's just like man he's 
they don't know how to bring out their own personalities. They're just trying to create stuff and it just comes off super cheesy. So I, I think even for myself, I'm like, if I had a docuseries following me, I'd be like, oh, it'd be nice for people to, like, like, for me to have my authentic conversations that I have normally off camera with friends mm -hmm. and have people know that that's who I am. And that way on the court, like, I'm even more open to talking that way and just being that mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Which I, I obviously get a lot of that already through the podcast. Yeah. Because... I mean, you, can all, you can't fake yourself for <laughs> this many hours, <laughs> four years now. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's just another reason why I think it's cool. Yeah. I think in journalism school, we had a basic rule of thumb that, like, your job as the writer is, is to get so far out of the way of the story that they don't know that someone's writing it. They, they mm. just, like, that's their story. And they're like, it's kind of like when you're watching a movie. The best actors don't seem like they're acting, essentially. And I feel like that's what you capture because I got a little sampling of it. Yeah. I feel like that's what you capture because I know Kristen and Taryn pretty well. And I know Zana really well. She's Delaney's probably closest friend right now. And so we spend a lot of time. So I think you did a, a great job with that. Don't know Jake as well as I do the others, but um, you seem to just grab who they were as people, which I think is the most important thing. Because everyone sees you can get people's scores and stats anywhere. Like you can find their film from Atlanta anywhere you want but you can't get that behind the scenes stuff in the hotel room snack and like throwing their legs up on the wall and just talking about whatever it may yeah. be or Jake coaching the ladybugs mm -hmm. all two of them <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. You know? like that's the stuff people can't get that's that says so much right there the fact that Jake goes out of his way to go coach these two kids that probably don't give a crap about even being there <laughs> but like it shows so much about him as a dad like he wants to be that kind of father who's like willing to sacrifice his time to go out there and do something meaningless like it's not it, it's helping the kids but like just him knowing that he's willing to do that and be out there with his kids and support two kids show up to practice like you could easily cancel practice like, yeah it was, like, it was that literally so much in your head and that's probably like a two second clip you know it was his daughter and one other girl yeah it's so like i mean him and his wife matched him like it's just funny right yeah the other girl though i will say Fully decked out LA Galaxy uniform, socks, nice. shorts, jersey, all that. Uh -huh. She was about it. So excited to be at soccer practice with Coach Jake. So, <laughs> would have been a hard one to cancel. But yeah, like that's right, such yeah. a good point that you, you get to see that. So, what a statement mm -hmm. about who yeah, he is as a exactly. person that, like, if you just watch him on, on YouTube or on whatever streaming service that AVP is on, whenever you could watch Jake, like, you get nothing. You certainly don't think he's doing that. Right. You know, he's, he's yelling at the refs and, and whatever else as a competitor. <laughs> right. You don't picture that guy, like, barefoot running around a soccer field. I'd like to see him, though, if, if the refs make some wrong calls and his daughter, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It'd be like Bad News Bears. <laughs> yeah, you'd be tough. When you guys were originally <clears throat> drawing up your vision for what this project would look like, how different did it end up being? Different, for sure. Um, we had a lot of different ways that we thought we could do it, and... We were initially thinking it would be like three episodes, just like an Atlanta episode, a Chicago episode, a Manhattan episode. Mm. Um, and we stayed true-ish to that. Mm -hmm. But because of what we were able to see from their personal lives and kind of the way that each of those tournaments went, we kind of had to split things up and break them down and pick and choose with what's going to go where and how are we going to make this coherent. And like a lot of the way that we learned how to do that was watching different surf documentaries and F1 and like obviously ours is on a micro scale to what those are and have access to. Yeah. Um, but we just did it the best that we could in terms of like, how are we going to go back and forth between event and home life? Cause you know, F1 does that so well where you're at this event you build up this drama and then all of a sudden you kind of like cut back to this dude at mm -hmm. home golfing. Uh. And you know, for us it's way micro scale of, of something like that where how, you know, how are we going to keep an audience engaged and seeing these matches where it's not just going to be 24 minutes of volleyball because the, the initial idea was that we were going to tell people stories through the vehicle of volleyball mm -hmm. because beach volleyball has proven itself to not necessarily be the best at, at engaging a giant audience, but human stories are really good at that. Yeah. So we wanted to find people that had a cool story and that could speak well and would, would you know, do interesting things in their day-to-day -day life. Like Zana growing her tomatoes in her backyard mm -hmm. is an interesting thing that yeah. not every volleyball player has those little wrinkles about their Did personality. Did she take you to the ranch? No, we didn't oh. make it down there. I know. 
Down here though, she has a she has a garden, she has right? a little garden. I eat one of her radishes is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you're supposed to eat radish. Yeah, right? it's a radish. Me and Michael oh. are eating it. Oh, that's uh, tough. <laughs> no, she has she has some good edible things in the garden, but radishes, yeah. I'm out. I'm out on that option. I mean, I've had radishes. They, they don't taste like the one that I ate. <laughs> Maybe you got to let it sit out for a bit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, it um, it's different for sure. Um. I mean, we thought it was going to be James Shaw, Casey Patterson, and somebody with a job. And it turned into Zana, who's a full-time pro, Jake Gibb, and the best new team since Misty and Carrie. Yeah. So yeah. significantly different from a content perspective. Um, but in terms of, like, format, I think we made, we made what we wanted to make. And, yeah. and realistically for us as a young company, like, we wanted to make this so that we can demonstrate to others that we can do this on a bigger scale and do it, do it again. And, like... I think we've accomplished that. It's just now kind of up to us to market it and, and do a good job of trying to find the next project. And, yeah. you know, we want to keep working with volleyball. It's what I like to do in my free time mm-hmm. and what I want to do for fun. So we as a company, you know, it, it's funny. My two buddies, they're awesome. They're 5'8". Do not play volleyball. They're like, they fit in the same t-shirts. They're like the same size person. It's really funny. But because of this, like, they came and watched me at the beach a couple weeks ago. I went home and played like a local tournament. They came. We were like peppering. And they, you know, 4th of July party at my family's house. We're out there playing grass volleyball and mm-hmm. like... They're all in. They'll, they'll text me sometimes. You know, I've been remote for four months now and moved out. And they'll text me and be like, hey, like, Taryn and Kristen play this morning at like eight, right? Like, do you have a link? Do you know how I can watch it? And they're, they're into it. So right. like, I've seen it firsthand now that if you get this access and you see these things mm-hmm. and you come from no volleyball background and don't care about it at all, you can start to care. Right. We got two. We got two more. Hey. Plus two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on. So like, <laughs> we, for me selfishly, like I want to keep doing that as long as I can and as often That's as so I can. Cool. But volleyball has been a challenge to break into consistently you right. know and and we have a really good relationship with josh glazebrook and the avp and we want to keep working and mm-hmm. it's just a matter of what's that going to look like what can it look like who who can do what and how big is it going to be how little does it have yeah. to be for now and you know in an what's, ideal world what's like the next project look like it's a really good question yeah i mean we when we think about what's happening this year, I think that that Arizona championship is a super cool thing. Yeah. And we kind of look at that one event and say, there's going to be six teams on the men's and women's side with really interesting stories going into it and are hoping and wanting to make something happen with that where we can go in and say, you know, what was the road like to get here and what's going to happen? And, you know, whatever happens, happens. And the people that we pick it's certainly unlikely to happen again where we have another Taryn and Kristen type of situation where they win their very first thing and whatever else. But like a loss is a really good story too. And and right. especially a loss with a little bit of bounce back and a loss that matters a whole lot is, is really engaging. And I've been like, losing a bunch. It's, it's engaging. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Losing is like, I don't know, somebody said it the other day. It was Sean Cook actually. I was talking to Sean in Wapaka. Like torture? He was like, you know, you play beach volleyball, you're going to lose 90% of the time. And, and 90... Nine percent of the people at that tournament are going to lose that weekend. Right, right, yeah. and it's it's like that's a part of it. And obviously, winning is great. And yeah. we, as a society, just lift up winners like it's nobody's business. Like right. you know, gold medal, a gold medal gets a huge deal, and a silver medal is an unbelievable accomplishment that gets kind of like pooped on a little bit. And it's it's crazy how much we lift up winning and winners. So for us, like losing stories are super impactful. And so we want to pick somebody and we want to try to film that and, and tell that story yeah. of, of what is this championship. It's the first time they're doing it that I'm, I know of and a yeah. year-end championship thing. That's super cool. So let's, let's try to tell some of those stories. And outside of volleyball, you know, we, we're working with a couple other people and trying to figure out what we can do. We've been, had a couple of meetings with like some, some race teams, some different, different sports that we yeah. want to try to yeah. do that are just cool. You know, for sure. Get to go and see what that world's like. And yeah. it's yeah. a little bit harder because we don't have, don't have a DJ Ruche to get us in. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But yeah, we, we want to do stuff in the sports world ideally probably, but we've done a bunch of tourism things and we have some, you know, our clients that are like our bread and butter, our nonprofit clients and our schools and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's a fun career path that's Heck yeah. easy to complain about, but, but fun to do. Yeah. Yep. And it, I feel like you filming racing and schools and all this stuff, it's kind of like playing sports where the more sports you play, that's going to make you a well-rounded athlete. Right, where you're doing all these creative endeavors all over, I feel like it's going to make you a more well-rounded filmmaker. So that, you know, five years down the line, when you do get, say, a Netflix on board, a Hulu on board, or or just a tour, I'm new, like thinking, or the tour, yeah, 
the tour needs to hire a full-time crew, at least three guys, yeah. to do this for them every season and have mm-hmm. them under yeah. salary. Yeah, especially like if volleyball world, you know, an Olympic qualifying rolls around, if they want to really start like tracking that, mm-hmm. like you guys are, I feel like you put yourself in a good position, you and the McKibbins probably, to get scooped up in that kind of role. That's cool to hear. Sweet. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think I think we've certainly like we we kind of did that without trying to, and and mm-hmm. have have landed that spot now where people people know the AVP uncovered name and mm-hmm. like people watch those videos and send them to their friends. And it doesn't and even exist yet. Exactly, it's not even out. <laughs> Gotta wait a week and a half. But you don't no, even have mean, to put something out, and you already did something <laughs> good. Like, yeah, now we actually didn't <laughs> film anything. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry guys, we, we made a bunch did. of reels. <laughs> yeah, it was just reels. <laughs> uh, no, the McKibbins have done such a good job, and we've talked to them a ton, and those guys are like. Nice. They've they've done so much, so it's, it's cool to hear. It's cool to be you know in that sentence a little bit, but I think so too. So we um we get a little flack sometimes of like not in, you know picking a niche and being super specialized, but what's the fun in that? You know yeah. how, I think how are you going to learn those stuff? For it anyway. Yeah, like you're twenty five. Twenty five, which you can't just be going down. It feels old, week. man. Twenty five <laughs> yeah. feels super old right now. And I know it's a bad thing to say, but like. 25 feels, I like wake up in the morning, I'm like, man, my knees still work? I'm, I'm 25, that's terrible. I'm but, hooked up to an IV right now, bro. <laughs> I know. Yeah, 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 I'll stop, I'll stop. But like, it feels old. You're right, though. It is young. It's like, it's the time to take some risk and, you no, know. I, I think so, too. Like, when I'm here, when I heard your age, I was like, damn, it's like, they're doing a good job by like, just taking chances. Like, now's the time to take chances, have some risks, and like, follow your, whatever you call it, the bliss yeah whatever that thing is yeah. <laughs> uh because later on yeah you, i mean family whatever it might be you're not going to have the leeway to to take those risks and your tolerance for risk gets lower yeah. your tolerance <laughs> exactly you yeah rush on boo right now yeah as i say yeah but I'll like put that in perspective at 25 i just touched a beach volleyball for a first time and never had written a word on it so you, you kind of you're just getting started that's good to hear <laughs> yeah we um i don't know like, I didn't start playing volleyball until I was 21, mm-hmm. and 20, 21-ish, and it's like, it's now so such a big piece of what I do, and you know, it's not my whole life, but it's a big piece of it, and <laughs> right. it's like, we're, we started this company at 19 years old, 20 years old, and like, we've been able to pay bills, and pay for our cars, and pay That's rent, and it's huge. like, yeah, we, that, that bit of perspective is important sometimes, I think we, mm-hmm. we hold ourselves to a pretty high standard, mm-hmm. and, and want to be in a better position always, but we're doing some cool things, I guess, at a, at a pretty young age. So yeah, we'll try and appreciate that more. But it's been good. When you guys were looking for distribution, like, dude, so I'm sure you guys had this thing. You're like, all right, what do we do with it? Yep. <laughs> like, where did, where did oh you go? Oh my god, I've been <laughs> down that road, and I still don't know what to do. So I'm interested to hear. Yeah, we um we tried our best to not get there, right? Okay. Because we knew it was coming. We knew we were making this thing, mm-hmm. um, and and. What was tough is that we literally had six months where we, that that tourism show that we took on was a big, a bit larger scope of project than a three-person team is really designed to do. Right. Um, the credits of it are pretty hysterical. Cause it's just like directed, <laughs> it's like the same people over and over. And the credits are pretty long because it, yeah. it should be long. But we just kind of ran with it. So when we were doing that, we really couldn't do any AVP stuff. Um, and that would have been the time to really dive in and be chasing a lot of distribution options and some of the other things. So we were kind of leaning on volleyball people to try to help us out. But we um, we knew it was coming. We knew we were going to be done with it at some point and, and did the best we could to just reach out to, you know, climb the ladder anywhere that we possibly could. And the the sports entertainment world is like a really weird one. Um, we actually got a sales agent at one point that the way that that process works, I, I know that we kind of talked about this, like similar with a book where you kind of have to put your stuff out there and say, hey, if you want to represent this, if you think this can be valuable to you, you can hop on board. And it's like, we have no say. We have no control over what happens mm-hmm. here. And we pretty quickly found one that was like, felt like an unbelievably good fit. It was a guy that was like the former head of distribution for Netflix and had done a bunch of stuff in the sports entertainment world. And he was excited about it and all in. And we had a couple of meetings and then he kind of just stopped replying. We were like, oh, what's happening? And he gave me a call and was like, hey, I feel awful about this. The timing for you guys is like, unbelievably awful i feel really bad let me know how i can help but i just got a job offer i have to take it can't rep your project can't do it so like that was like the biggest carpet pull out from underneath our feet possible because that period of time was the time to be trying to do that stuff so we had a couple meetings with a couple other people where it was like look we have this thing what do you think you know I, i forget what that quote is but it's like you ask for work and 
you get advice, but if you ask for advice, you get work. So we kind of went into asking a ton of people for advice and trying to learn because we wanted the advice, not the work. But like we learned from it and it just didn't lead to anything. Um, led to nothing but some knowledge that we'll hold on to and hopefully use next time. But, yeah. you know, we got to be in the room with some really important people and climb the ladder a little bit. And I think one of the coolest things about this show is that, and again, this isn't an original thought. I don't know which smart person said this whenever, but like <laughs> there are people in rooms that I haven't been to that are talking about me and my project. And the fact that those conversations are happening about this show and this sport and the characters that we have in rooms that they've never been to mm-hmm. and with people that they've never met is like, it's a success in and of itself. That's like a success that doesn't lead to much yet, but it's, it's a step in the right direction right. that, you know, people now know about AVP Uncovered and people know about Zana and Taryn and Kristen and Jake Gibb and like that has to start momentum a little bit and, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully that ball just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and it, it might have to roll for a long time before it gets any bigger, but like at least it's moving. It's and moving. We've, we've done our best to push it and now July 28th, it like actually maybe hits a cliff or maybe hits a wall and we're going to find out. But first episode that day, every other Thursday. So keep watching it. Oh, it, every other Thursday. So no, no, every, every Thursday. Every, every Thursday. Yeah, yeah five it. weeks. We get five five weeks of Thursday night volleyball. Perfect. Yeah. And did you time it off kind of the meet of the AB, AVP season on purpose? Yeah, we want... We're going to be like on tour for that five weeks, so it's perfect for, you know, we need lots to watch in our hotels. <laughs> yeah, people are traveling in the volleyball world, and the yeah. people that aren't in the volleyball world are hopefully excited about what's happening in the volleyball world. So right. it'll be the, the night before each of those tournaments starts is, is when they'll come out. So, ah, okay, yeah. So next week is the Thursday before Fort Lauderdale. Then it's the Thursday before Atlanta. So we'll see last year's Atlanta with Taryn and Kristen right before Atlanta starts. Right, right, right. Um, and then it'll be a week where we kind of see, you know, what home life is like for Zana and Jake and getting ready for Manhattan. And then, and then we'll see Manhattan right before Manhattan and we'll see mm. Chicago right before Chicago. So it's smart. It fit really well where we'll get to get this, this thing out while it's still relevant because you know, if it came out right after Atlanta, people would be like, Oh, this isn't what happened last weekend. <laughs> right, you know, yeah. our, our expectation now is that content gets turned around like That's that. That's a good but, point. So we, we're getting it out there just in time. Yeah. Um, which is, which is good. Or they're going to be like, damn, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen Taryn one again? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Man, if I could if I could bet on Bally's on that one yet, I might. Those two. Those two are good at volleyball. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> They're good at volleyball. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. So where where can all the listeners find all this stuff? Is the AVP Uncovered YouTube? Is that what it's called? Yeah, AVP Uncovered, Best of the Beach. Um, if you just search AVP Uncovered Beach Volleyball, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. Um, AVP Uncovered on Instagram is where we're doing any and all announcement stuff. Um, that following is, is pretty engaged and growing. Yep. Um, we're doing a poster giveaway this week okay. for the official posters, but this is probably going to come out after that. Um, next week, we'll just kind of promote it and push it, and then Thursday night, 8 p.m., we'll premiere it on YouTube, and then the following Thursday, 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 Thursday. So yeah, AVP Uncovered, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, but Instagram's the way to go nice. for info, and then subscribe on YouTube, and you won't, you won't miss stuff. Did you Love guys it. think about uh, dipping into crowdfunding? thought about it we actually ran one we um okay it's funny when we had james and zana and didn't have a third person we ran a kickstarter super early on and it did okay but with kickstarter if you don't hit your goal you don't get it it. and we were okay with that we Mm. knew that was the deal and we just kind of said you know what let's just kind of see because we weren't necessarily totally all in at that point yet and you know looking back maybe we do that differently maybe we go crowdfunding where it doesn't it doesn't have to hit the threshold obviously now that we have our stories and our characters we probably could but we're, you know, we know the deal with Peach Volleyball. We're not in it chasing a payday because mm-hmm. that, that would have been a mistake <laughs> if we, yeah, if we right. came into it chasing <laughs> yeah. a payday. Um, so at this point, I think we're just kind of ready to ready to wrap this season one up and hopefully turn it into something bigger and better in the future. Right. So, yeah, crowdfunding, it's a good question. There's so many different ways to do it, and the yeah. one that we picked just didn't work out. Yeah. Um, so there, yeah, there was a Kickstarter. It was cool. I thought we, did, I thought we built a very good Kickstarter. Yeah. Which, which is like a, a thing in and of itself to kind of do it the right way and yeah. whatever. But um, it was a very different show then than what it became. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Because have you heard of this show called The Chosen? I've not. It's this. Uh, it's basically, it's the New Testament made for TV. Completely crowdfunded. They started on YouTube. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now they do it all on their app. But they raised like. Forty-one million dollars, and it's now like the most. Now it's well into like hundreds of millions. 
I'd never heard of a crowdfunded TV show before, and they just crushed it. And so they have like six seasons planned, and it's like high production value. That's wild. So I didn't know if that was something you'd looked into. You should watch that show, or just take a look at kind of what they've been able to build. Because are you interested? In Forty-one company. million dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, should, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I wonder. Try that. <laughs> I wonder if the the beach volleyball community is like significant. Or comparable in size to Christians in the United States. It's <laughs> both small. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Similar numbers, probably. <laughs> right. It's a passion, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah, there, there are different ways to do it. So yeah. we've thought about that. You know, I think a, a big piece of what will gauge it for us in terms of what we do next is how it does right now. And it's a little bit of a bummer that we're posting it this late because, obviously, it's a little bit too late to do a ton for this season in mm. 2022. But that's why we kind of have an eye on that, like, end Phoenix. of September Phoenix, Phoenix thing yeah. of, like, you know, if something can happen, but, you know, whether it be a brand or a, an athlete that has a sponsor or funded by the tour, or whatever, whatever it is, like we want to do something. Um, hmm. So we'll see what that could be kind of as like a, a way to kind of push us to next year. And, right. and hopefully this this season one does really well. And then we can kind of do something as like a bridge and then do something a little bit bigger in 2023. Something right. that, that really keeps the ball rolling. And, yeah, and, totally. Yeah, that's that's the thought. So whether that be like an app and, you know kind of build your own OTT like yeah Netflix mini Netflix type of thing would be mm-hmm. would be great there's well now you put know, it man. out there yeah Gotta I'm excited for there. you I appreciate I appreciate you guys giving me a little little platform to, to talk about it yeah it's well cool. I mean there's not many people like Trash said there's not many people doing this stuff in this sport I mean we're still really the only podcast I mean you and the McKibbins are now really the only video production people doing their own thing yeah. obviously there are camera guys out there filming yeah. and creating content for players but you're the only people doing doing your creating your own original content and so anytime people are making stuff yeah we're all we'll give them whatever platform we got helping each other and it's uh trying to defy the whole like you know everyone's got to get a piece of the pie like there's there's infinite pieces of the pie here we just need a bigger yeah bigger pie or something you know <laughs> so we appreciate you doing what you did yeah, well, thank I'm you. I'm excited to watch yeah. it. I, I'm excited for people to see it. I really am. So Watch it right before Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. Get Thursday night. Up, yeah, bro. 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Dive Thursday in. night before Fort Lauderdale. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. We'll be there. Yeah. Pumping us up. Just watch it together. Hell, there yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Awesome, Sweet. man. Anything else you want to add? I don't think so. No, I'm excited to be playing volleyball and talking about volleyball, filming it. It's it's a fun piece of life. So thank you guys for letting me Heck yeah. come chat about it. Watch AVP Uncovered. July 28th. Shoots. Shoots.